Hey everyone, I'm Scott Annan, founder of Ambitious Media, the internet's leading site for success and inspiration. I'm here today with a very special guest, Saul Singer, co-author of the best-selling book, Startup Nation, the story of Israel's economic miracle. Saul, thank you for being here. Good to be here, Scott. Thank you. Uh, I first heard of Startup Nation at a talk that was given by Saul's co-author, Dan Siener, and I knew that it was, these were principles that I wanted to share with the Ambitious community. Principles of entrepreneurship, innovation, creativity, and taking action. So I'm thrilled that Saul is here with us to talk about these principles. Can you speak a little bit about the background of the book and the message that you're trying to convey? Well, the background was that uh, Dan, my co-author, is also my uh, brother-in-law, actually, okay. uh, had the idea for uh, writing the book. Actually, he didn't know he had the idea at first. It started in 2001 when he was a student at Harvard Business School. And uh, he brought the first mission of Harvard Business School students to Israel. It was mostly not, not Jews, many of them uh, non-Americans. And they were fascinated by what they saw in Israel, uh, amazed. And since then, Dan had been uh, looking for a book about this to try to explain what's going on in Israel. Couldn't find one. I looked in Hebrew in Israel. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I was at the Jerusalem Post. Uh, and wrote about the economy from time to time, and I couldn't find anything, so we decided to write it. And in writing, was there anything particular about the entrepreneurship culture of Israel that we could borrow in the United States that we could benefit from? Well, I think the, the main thing is the lesson of what entrepreneurship is or where innovation comes from. I think that, uh, that innovation, people have this impression that innovation is a light bulb going off in your head and, and, and basically the creativity element, which is really a, uh, but I think Israel shows that, that it's a small part of the picture. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you look at, uh, there are lots of countries with a lot of smart people. Um, we're not saying that you know Israelis uh, are, are smarter than anybody else. Uh, the difference is that if you're a smart person in, say, Finland, you'll probably go into a big company like Nokia. Right. Or if you're uh, in uh, Korea, you know you'll go into Samsung. But in Israel, you're much more likely to do a startup. And the reason for that is there are two other pieces besides the light bulb. And that is, the first one I would say is being mission-oriented, being driven. And Israelis get that partly from, from living in Israel, partly because it's, it's a country with a mission, with a purpose, mm -hmm. partly because uh, most of them serve in the army and they, they spend two or three years uh, doing something, sacrificing for something larger than themselves, learning uh, teamwork, learning leadership, learning mission, uh, how, you know, that you must get the mission done. Uh, which forces you to improvise and forces you to be more entrepreneurial also. Um, and, and that's a huge part of it. And the third thing I would say is the entrepreneurial attitude. And uh, a huge part of that is being willing to fail, right. willing to risk failure. It's, uh, I mean, I've been talking to people, a lot of people about, uh, about Israel and, and how, they, how they look at Israel and, you know, I was talking to People spend some time in places like Japan and Korea, and uh, you know, in Japan in particular, uh, he was saying that well, you know, the problem there is that uh, if you start a business and you fail, you can't get married. Right. <laughs> you lose face. I mean, right. You, you you lose reputation. Uh, it, it's an unacceptable risk. The idea that you would start something that has a high chance of failing in Japan is almost unthinkable. Uh, and so you have to have a culture that accepts failure, and Israel very much um, recognizes that that almost every entrepreneur has failed before they've succeeded, and that uh, uh, you're almost uh, more likely if you were to kind of bet on or invest in a company, you'd almost you'd want to have someone who maybe failed a couple of times before rather than someone who's on their first startup. Right. So that's very clear, it's very recognized and accepted in Israel. And I think also in the United States, certainly in Silicon Valley, there's a culture that accepts taking risks. Most startups do fail, whether in Israel or the United States, uh, and, and then trying again. How do we get students to take greater risks and apply this entrepreneurship paradigm to their academic lives? Well, the great thing about being a student, being young, is that uh, you're, you're able to take risks. You're able to, uh, you don't have a whole career that uh, you're, you're sitting on, you're starting out. 
it's, it's the ideal time to, to start new things that, uh, and to gain experience. Um, so it's, it's really a question of attitude. I mean, one, um, one thing about Israelis compared to, say, Americans and other people is, is I find that Israelis are much more likely when they get an idea to go ahead and do it mm -hmm. rather than think, oh, I've got to get some experience first, I've got to right. work here first, I've got to do that first. Israelis tend to think I can do anything and it doesn't matter what kind of right. experience I have. And uh, they might be wrong half the time, but, uh, but uh, sometimes that's, that's the best way to go about it uh, is, to, is to just jump in and uh, get your experience that way rather than uh, trying to do uh, a bunch of more conventional things first. In, in, in assessing an entrepreneurial idea, if someone who's out there wants to start a company or wants to you know, take action, what are the one or two or three steps that they you know, should take to get going on that on that business. Well, there's a lot of a lot of good you know material written about how to take something from an idea to a prototype to a product and so on. That it's not that whole whole process is not simple. It takes a lot of a lot of patience and a lot of that's where the drive comes in because right. there are a lot of frustrations along the way. And you know, one thing I found out about writing a book is that um, the book comes out something some, uh, almost not completely different, but very different from what we, Dan and I initially in our book proposal uh, wrote up. And the same is true of business, is that almost every startup ends up differently, very differently, than its founders originally think uh, it's going to be. There, there's always changes along the way, and that's part of, a part of success is being able to adapt, being flexible, and realizing when you have to change. Right. So